Hey, this is a Frank. This is a 2005 Toyota Sienna minivan. This is another video in the series on the Toyota Sienna cooling system. But I'm going to tell you in this video it applies to vehicles that have the 3.0 liter and 3.3 liter V6 engines, so the 1MZFE and 3MZFE. This includes Toyota Camry, Toyota Avalon, Toyota Sienna, and Toyota Highlander. We've already started digging into this engine, so let's dive right in. This is one of the most difficult repairs that you can do on this engine. And it's for this part, which is the thermostat housing. And this thermostat housing is all the way under the upper intake manifold and the lower intake manifold and is bolted to the valley between the two cylinder blocks. I've already unbolted it. So you can have a look at it. The thermostat goes right here in the front. And on the underside that I've already cleaned off, this is sealed with a form in place gasket. Eventually, the sealer starts to leak. So you have to pull apart the entire top of the engine to get down to this part. By the way, if this thermostat housing for your car is damaged, for whatever reason from corrosion or it's cracked or it's warped you can get a new one either direct from toyota or also from aftermarket third-party suppliers i'll include a link for it in the video description when the sealer on that housing starts to leak coolant will drip down the side of the engine and onto the transmission then it'll stream down the back of the transmission and this area is almost impossible to see until you disassemble everything. So there is no way to really confirm the problem until you dig all the way down here. And there are other items that can also be leaking under the manifold. So you can't be 100% sure that it's being caused by the housing. You have a hose down here that goes between the coolant neck and the thermostat housing and this hose can leak. You also have gaskets right here that are between the lower intake manifold and the uh, heads and these gaskets have coolant passages. They seal coolant passages that can also leak. You also have the thermostat housing itself where the thermostat is mounted, the outlet tube can leak. So you cannot be 100% certain of this leak until you've dug all the way down underneath and at that point you can identify the leak. Toyota recommends a special sealant for doing this repair, but that sealant is not always available readily. So instead, I use this Permatex sealer for water pump and thermostat housing repair. And part number is 22071. I'll include a link in the video description. And this has given me good results for coolant systems. The factory service manual recommends a bead that is between 3 millimeter and 5 millimeter in width. That's less than a quarter inch. And I may have over applied a little bit here but better safe than sorry. And I've used up two of the little tubes entirely. I've bolted the housing back in. The torque for these small bolts, which are six millimeter, is 71 inch pounds. That's less than six foot pounds. I've also screwed in the studs for the flat response donut knock sensors that this engine has. These studs have a Torx head, and it's a size 8 Torx, 
to remove those studs you have to get those out of the way if you want to take the housing in and out and if the tips are too corroded to use the torque socket you can use the double nut technique which I had to use on one of these two studs be very careful when you're doing this repair if one of, if the small bolts or nuts drops in to one of these intake ports and the valve happens to be open on that side and it drops down into the cylinder there ain't no getting it back out without removing the head and doing a head gasket job so be extremely careful these are the instructions for applying this sealant okay you apply you assemble the parts you let it dry for one hour and then after that you tighten to the correct torque specifications and it takes 24 hours to fully cure so that's how long you should wait before uh, adding the coolant back into the system here you can see I've repositioned both knock sensors and torqued them to the 14 foot-pound specification the specification for the single pole knock sensors in the 1MZFE is 29 foot-pounds here's the hose in position back where it belongs and the lower intake and fuel rail go on right above that the bolts for the lower intake go to 11 foot-pounds don't forget the washers that go underneath the nuts for the lower intake each one of the nuts has a washer everything is reassembled with all the coolant hoses reconnected the torque for these bolts on top of the manifold is 21 foot pounds now we refill the system with coolant and the test for leaks again to refill i use this funnel system and i will include a link to this item in the video description this funnel makes it very easy to refill the system and it allows air to bubble out. So there you can see the air bubbling out. Now we're ready to pressure test the system. I use this pressure tester. I'll include a link to one just like it in the video description. We just pump the system up to pressure and see if anything leaks out. These repairs are never complete without pressure testing and anybody who says that they are is fooling themselves or trying to fool you looking from down under the car where you can see traces of previous coolant leaking it is now staying dry as a bone under pressure it looks like we've completed a successful repair so i want to thank you for staying with me through this video for this tedious repair and thank you for watching